Good evening, everybody. Thank you so much for coming tonight and joining us. See a couple of people still getting connected, so we'll get started in about one minute here. I want to thank Mrs. Komai on our Atlas board for making um, this possible for us so we can concentrate on the content we hope to share with you tonight. She takes care of the technical. She and her outstanding son, who's a 2021 graduate of Dominion High School. And this last couple of people connect, I just want to introduce three people from our team who are here to answer questions this evening. And uh, my name, of course, is John Brewer, and I'm blessed to serve as the principal at Dominion High School. We have David Edwards, who is the director of school counseling at Dominion, and he's here to work with our school test coordinator, Tom Chuba. Tom, right now, it looks like your camera's uh, off. And um, Mr. Chuba is the school test coordinator. So their purpose in being here tonight is to place primary focus. Our primary topic tonight is to talk about SOL testing and make sure you know the uh, requirements in terms of your Titans taking SOL tests at the high school level. It's quite complex, a lot more complex now than it has ever been before and a lot more complex at the high school level than at the elementary or middle school level. And we're also joined by Dr. Janine Sims. Dr. Sims is the principal at William Obadiah Roby High School. And another topic that we will um, get to in a few minutes is uh, just explaining a little bit about the potential that William Obadiah Roby High School and Dominion High School will be co-located on Dominion High School's campus. That's possible because we have some um, available space. We're at 83% capacity this year um, with slight increases over the next couple of years uh, expected. Dr. Sims School has currently 30 students and probably 50 next year. So they uh, are very purposely small. We'll explain a little bit more about Roby uh, later tonight and see if you have any questions about how we can coexist. And we actually think we can do that really well uh, to the benefit of both student bodies. But our first topic tonight is SOL testing. We do have a prepared presentation. And I'm gonna ask if Mrs. Komai could give you a link to submit questions as Mr. Chuba and Mr. Edwards present. I think it'll probably be best if we let them make their presentation in its entirety and feel free to use a Google form that we have to uh, send us any questions that you have and Mr. Chuba, Mr. Edwards and I can answer those questions um, at, at some point during the presentation. So Tom and David, I'll turn it over to you. Okay. Is my audio working? I got the camera back on. Okay, so try sharing quick. screen again. How's that working? I hope. Looks good. <laughs> okay. Okay, so a little bit of background, SOLs are used to help award verified credits and for school accreditation and the secondary usage, uh, the counselors use SOL scores to help advise students regarding their coursework and you know how they might do say in dual enrollment. We don't report SOL scores to the colleges. They don't prevent somebody from being placed in a course and SOL scores are never used to determine or make judgments on joining athletics clubs and the different honor societies. Some terms you'll hear are uh, verified credit, VC. This is awarded to a, to a student who passes both the SOL class and the associated SOL test. There's FA, which is federal accountability that has to do with school accreditation and a term locally awarded verified credit, LAVC, that the uh, school can award to students who score between a 375 and a 399 on an associated SOL. The issue here is that the SOL has to be taken twice and this score must be achieved during one of those two attempts. 
they have two sets of diploma requirements. Um, there's their coursework, which determines whether they receive a standard or advanced diploma. So that's strictly the credits they earn based on the courses they are taking, the number of lab courses, math courses, foreign language courses, et cetera. But in this same process, students must earn five verified credits. The verified credits do not affect the type of diploma. So the verified credits have to be, as you see on the screen, math, social studies, science, reading and writing. Back in 2019-2020, during the lockdown, the SOLs were canceled. If the student passed the class, they were awarded the verified credit. This happened during our current seniors sophomore year and our current juniors freshman year. So they were the two classes affected by this. And then last year, we held the SOLs at the schools. Students were asked to come in and take the SOLs in person, but due to COVID concerns, parents could refuse to have their students tested, which required a refusal form be submitted and the SOL was recorded as no score, and uh, but they were also not awarded a verified credit because they didn't take the test. Last year, the passing score, as it's always been, was still 400 or better, but anyone who was in an SOL class last year and took the SOL, if they scored in this 350 to 399 range, the school could award the locally awarded verified credit as many times as necessary to help the student achieve their five verified credits and the student only needed to take the SOL test once if they scored above a 350 to the 399. This year, all of the pre-COVID standards are back in place. So they still need the five verified credits if you if a parent wishes to refuse to have their student take an SOL test, the refusal form is still needed, the passing score is still 400 or better, but the pre-COVID LAVC rules apply, which means the students need to earn 375 to 399 and attempt the SOL a second time um, to make sure that they've tried it twice. Some alternate exams that we use when students are not successful on the SOLs are business writing, uh, which is a time test. We usually give it to our daily English seniors in place of the two-part SOL. And we also use it to retest when students don't pass the writing SOL. So we don't have to put, the, we don't make them go back through the two day long writing SOL. So I'm about to start offering this to approximately 65 students. We have a workplace documents test, which is also a time test, and it's given to students who don't pass the reading SOL. So English 11 actually has three different SOL tests, so to speak. Because the reading SOL is used for federal accountability, um, we don't give the workplace documents test until people have tried the actual reading SOL. AP exams can be used to help students with their verified credits if they earn a score of two or better. If a student is going to use their AP score to replace an SOL, a parent refusal is required so that there's a record of the parent refusing the actual SOL test. So our seniors need their five verified credits and their academic credits. And we're working with about six to eight seniors that still need to complete these requirements. The juniors, five verified credits. And with some exceptions, most of our juniors only need to earn a verified credit in, in writing, which is a two-part test, and the verified credit in reading. So as I said, I'm about to offer business writing to 
approximately 65 students to see if we can get them across the line for writing. And then the reading SOL will be taken in May. Sophomores, once again, five verified credits. Last year as freshmen, they should have taken math, social studies, and science SOLs. Um, social studies last year did use performance-based assessments in place of the SOLs. And they received SOL credit or verified credit, providing they passed the social studies class. But this year, they have returned to the actual exams rather than using the performance-based assessment. The biology SOL that or the is needed this year to meet the federal accountability requirement, and in some cases, the verified credit. So if a sophomore did not take or did not pass the earth science SOL, they'll be taking the biology SOL to hopefully earn their verified credit. And we'll talk about those who passed earth science and what biology means for the FA requirement. And the freshmen need all five verified credits. And this year should be taking math, social science and science SOLs so that typically means Algebra 1, World History 1, and Earth Science. Everybody has to take the SOLs in school. There is no remote testing for the SOL. So even our um, virtual Loudoun students must come into the school to take their test. The schedule looks like this. We're going to do mass testing again so on May 16th, all of the social studies SOLs will be offered. May 18th is reading. Um, May 17th, we're not doing any SOLs because the um, original holiday on May 2nd pushed AP tests to May 17th. On May 19th, we'll do the math SOLs. And then on May 20th, the science SOLs. And we were very careful to choose this order so that we could avoid conflicts, especially on May 20th with any um, juniors taking science SOLs or a reading SOL or a math SOL on May 20th, the day of their prom. Freshmen typically in social studies will take either World History One or they might be in World Geography. So those are the two SOLs that will most likely be given to the freshmen. Sophomores who need a social studies credit will either take World History II if that's what they're in. If they're in AP World, parents could refuse the World History II and wait to see what happens on AP World's exam. Juniors, by this time, they are taking Virginia and US History. So they, if they still don't have the social studies SOL, They'll probably be taking this because that's the course they're in. Or once again, parents could refuse this one and see what happens on the AP US history exam. Notice in the social studies, there's no mention of federal accountability requirements. The reading SOL is needed for both a verified credit and federal accountability. So all of our English 11 students must take the reading SOL and attempt it prior to being offered the work keys test. Federal accountability, I'm not sure if I'm defining it too early, but federal accountability measures our participation rate, the number of students who attempt the required SOL divided by the number enrolled. And I think we also they take a look at pass rates. So those are the are two of the reasons for taking certain SOLs. So reading is one of the SOLs that Virginia has designated as a federal accountability SOL. And they'll be doing this on May 18th. Students who are in AP Lang may have a parent submit a parent refusal form to refuse the SOL and wait for the exam score. This is something we've offered our AP Lang students for years, um, 
and we have historically not asked them to take the reading SOL in addition to this. So the math SOLs are being given on May 19th. The federal accountability rules state that a student must take a math SOL when they're physically present in high school. So this is great if the student is taking Algebra 1 as a freshman. They need Algebra 1 for verified credit. They need the test for federal accountability, and they satisfy both things with one SOL. But if a student has taken and passed a high school math SOL while they're in middle school, they've earned the verified credit. So their math verified credit is satisfied, but the federal accountability is not satisfied because they took the SOL while they were physically present in a middle school. So now the student, whether they be a freshman, a sophomore, or junior, needs to take the next math SOL in the process so that federal accountability can be met. So that means a freshman who took Algebra 1 in middle school is expected for federal accountability purposes to take the geometry SOL or a sophomore taking Algebra 2, something like that, whatever the, the progression might be. A parent can refuse those extra math SOLs if the student already has the verified credit. What happens is no score is entered, no verified credit is awarded, and a refusal code, a special code number, three-digit number, is entered in Phoenix. The student is not affected. It doesn't affect the student's um, diploma, their passing the class, the number of verified credits they need. It has absolutely no effect on the student. It does potentially affect the school's rating because it will affect our ratio for um, participation rates and pass rates. The science SOLs are on May 20th. Freshmen normally take either earth science or biology to meet their science ver verified credit, depending on which class they're, they're in as a freshman. If they're a freshman and they're taking biology, both the verified credit and, and the federal accountability requirement are met. This is because Virginia has determined that the science it will use to satisfy federal accountability is biology. Loudoun is one of a handful of jurisdictions that starts freshmen off with earth science. So they are, our kids don't hit biology until their sophomore year. Now, a parent could refuse the earth science SOL and wait and have their student take the biology SOL during sophomore year to achieve both the verified credit and satisfy the federal accountability requirement. That's a, a parent student decision. Biology is normally taken during sophomore year. If they didn't, if the student did not take earth science or didn't pass the earth science SOL, then the biology SOL, as I stated earlier, helps them out with their science verified credit and it helps with the federal accountability requirement because now they're taking the biology SOL. Student options are as during a sophomore year is they can um, take the biology test for the verified credit. If they've already achieved the verified credit during earth science, then the parent can refuse to have their student take the biology SOL because they already have their verified credit towards their diploma. Once again, no score is entered and a refusal code is entered, no effect on the student whatsoever, which is what I say, say here on this slide. So nothing happens to the student grade, transcript, diploma, et cetera, in any way by this. And occasionally we may find students still needing a science verified credit. And if they're in chemistry, 
they are going to be taking the chemistry SOL um, since that's the science they're in and typically what the, typically will have the most success by taking the SOL associated with the course that they're currently taking. As I said, um, we're planning to use math testing, which mass testing, which means using the gymnasiums like we did last year. The um, desks in the gyms uh, will be spaced. Um, right now, the measurements I took were four feet front to back and five feet side to side. Um, and we can get quite a few people into the gymnasiums and then use the classrooms for overflow or for our small group testing that will need to take place. So the hope is that we can knock out, you know, most, if not all of social studies, all of reading, all of math, all of science on those four days in the week following AP exams, and then spend the remainder of May and part of June, either with um, expedited retakes or chasing down the students who need to make up a test uh, in order to uh, get their verified credits, especially any seniors who are still out there. If you do have specific questions, you can of course call the school. And um, if I'm here, they'll connect me or call me on the radio or please leave a message, ask to, to go to my voicemail and leave a message for me. And there's my email. Um, I don't know if any parents are out there that who have emailed me. I know Mrs. Komai has, and uh, she can certainly attest that um, I tend to answer emails within one or two hours of receiving them here. So I, I don't wait very long to answer the emails. That way you guys are getting your answers as quickly as I can get them back to you. So that is a very, very fast rundown of the SOLs. I'll stop sharing in case people wish to ask questions. Well, thanks so much, Mr. Tuba. Let me clarify two things. Actually, if you could go back to sharing and go back to one of the screens, maybe science sure. would be a good example. Just want to help make sure we've clearly distinguished what federal accountability means and how it impacts your, your student. Um, SOLs are used for two very different purposes. Do you, there is a do you know which one you want, Dr. Brewer? Um, how about how about the next, that one right there? Thank you so much. Okay. So I just want everybody to understand really clearly that there are, the SOLs are currently serving two distinct purposes in Virginia's schools. The first one, the one that's important to you as a parent is your student has to pass five of these things to earn five verified credits in order to earn a diploma. What you are not interested in, I'm sure, is your student taking unnecessary SOL tests after they've already earned their verified credits. That means um, that distinguishes testing for another purpose. Sometimes your students will be asked to test for what Tom has called, rightfully so, federal accountability. But to be clear, the federal accountability is directed at the school. We get measured by the results of particular tests, the reading test, any math test that the student takes, and the biology test. And the school has a vested interest, as Tom said, in high levels of participation in those tests and students doing well in those tests. But once a student has already met their verified credit responsibilities in a subject matter, say science, there isn't any advantage to them taking additional SOL tests. There are advantages to Dominion High School, of course, for students taking the next test and doing well on it. Because again, our pass rate is, uh, we're held accountable by the pass rate through this thing called federal accountability. And so in science, we, uh, that, the federal accountability test being biology is really awkward because many students already take during freshman year the earth science test and have already passed it, have already met their verified credit responsibilities in science. And yet they're expected as 
typically sophomores taking biology to still take a biology test that they don't have any personal need to pass. So that's why Tom mentions here on this slide that um, you can refuse. Option two here is to take to refuse to take the SOL student if a verified credit's already been earned. There's no penalty to the student for making that happen, and it's not a terrible thing for the school. Um, you know, we we really don't want students over tested, so we're not you know we're supportive if you decide you don't want them to test. So I just wanted to make sure that that was clear that this thing called federal accountability is a, an accountability measure for schools. And while we will be in the other subject areas, uh, math and well, it's complicated. It's very complicated. Um, and your, your student might be asked to take an SOL test in a subject where they already have a verified credit and you don't have to do that is the bottom line. So I've just probably made it a lot more confusing than Tom did. But um, now if you want to use the link that we mentioned a Google form to submit a question or if you want to put any other questions in the chat, we can also probably respond to them through the chat right now. And if we don't have a lot of questions about SOLs, that's perfectly fine. We will. Um, we, we have four other topics we'd also like to take at least some time to address and see if you have questions about those. Mr. Edwards, do you think while we wait for some questions to populate, do you have any points of clarification you think should be made? Oh, that was very clear. Um, uh, Tom did an excellent job. Thank you. I think the only thing I forgot to mention was where people can find the refusal form, and it is on the Dominion webpage. Um, you have to scroll down a little bit to the information and links, and I think it's called Parent Refusal Permission Click. That's what the parent needs to submit. Um, sending me an email saying you wish to refuse kind of works, but I have to um, have a record of all the refusals and the permission click form um, goes into a database in case the assessment office wants to question anything so that we can account for every student who doesn't test. Right at the moment, I'm not seeing any questions in the chat or in our Google Docs. So I'm going to move us on to four other topics that we'll address more briefly and for which we don't have a formal presentation. And go ahead and populate your questions using either the Google form or just putting your question directly in the chat about SOLs or any other of these four topics. The first one I'd like to address is just want to continue to be transparent about COVID-19 infection rates at school. We currently have two staff members who are out. That's on a staff of about 225 people, so 1% current infection rate. Um, and we have uh, two students as of Friday. I didn't get to check in with the nurse today to see if she had any contacts, but we had one student definitely tested positive last week and one student we sent home suspecting that they may, and of course, um, we were waiting their test results. That's out of a student body of 1475. So that's, you know, 0.1% uh, infection rate among students. So it looks to us like, you know, for now, at least, we are going to conclude these final 35 or so days of school that are left without significant challenges. If we were going to have significant challenges, we would have had them this week probably based on a lot of people having traveled over spring break. We'll continue to be vigilant, but we are certainly backing off significantly our mitigation strategies. Um, obviously, most students at this point, I'd say probably half are, are um, no longer wearing masks, and that's probably reflected on our staff as well. And again, that seems to be without any concerns about transmission within school. So feel free to, again, populate with the chat with the questions you have about that or the Google form. But I'll move on to a second health issue, and that is um, made a decision, not one I'm happy about, not one I want to be a long-term decision to close some of our bathrooms during the school day. We still have multiple bathrooms available at all times during the day, but our massive bathrooms 
had become a hangout for um, adolescents who have become addicted, it seems, or at least experimenting with vaping devices. And in order for us to get a better handle on that in terms of being able to supervise and uh, frankly, hold accountable those individuals who are responsible for doing that in our bathrooms, uh, we needed to move from having 10 to 12 available bathrooms for, uh, well, more than that, 20, probably 20 open bathrooms at any given time down to about, we're down to about six right now. It makes it more inconvenient for our students without question to get to the bathroom, but it makes it much easier for us to monitor those bathrooms and ensure that the ones that are open uh, are free from um, the effects of students going in there and vaping, which is certainly quite personally injurious and it's unpleasant and at least slightly injurious and harmful for those who have to deal with the secondhand smoke, although it's not certainly not as awful as a traditional cigarettes. So unfortunately, vaping devices look like ordinary things that um, you know, kids should bring to school like USB devices, unfortunately, but they're uh, certainly sinister devices. And just want you to know we're, we're trying to do our best to hold our students accountable and promote their well-being and health. This is not a problem alone at Dominion High School. This is a problem in all 20 of our high schools. And it is a problem all across the country. And it seems to have had a tremendous resurgence during the COVID crisis, unfortunately. Um, third topic, and again, just populate questions in if you have them. I'm sorry, I don't mean to be a talking head, but I uh, do wanna you know, respect your time and cover these four topics, five topics, and then move on to, um, let you move on with your evening. But so topic number one was SOL testing. Topic number two, uh, virtually no impact from COVID-19 at this stage in, in the pandemic. Number three was, um, you know, the health concerns related to vaping in the bathrooms. And right now that, that's down since spring break because of the uh, greater supervision in the bathrooms that are open. We will plan to reopen those bathrooms gradually and strategically and make it more convenient for students to use the restroom as we are able to manage, you know, that unfortunate dimension of, of our work. Topic four is renovation. We are currently under renovation, long planned. There were nine high schools built between the years 1996 and approximately 2017, where the first room you, as you enter the building on your right or your left is the library and the opposite side is the auditorium. You have to walk about hundred feet into the building, um, a person would before they could be seen by the main office staff. So again, that's nine out of our 17 comprehensive high schools that were built on that floor plan. Uh, hindsight being 2020, here in 2022, it seems quite obvious that the main office should be at the main entrance. And so all nine of these high schools built on what at the time seemed like a good idea, but a flawed floor plan are uh, systemically by Loudoun County Public Schools being renovated. So we lost our primary library as of March 1st and relocated it to a rather large classroom space, uh, not nearly as large as a typical library, but enough for an entire classroom full of students to come and work. Um, during any, uh, it, so we have a functional library, although it's small. The, uh, the purpose of that is to get the main office and school counseling office moved up to that uh, more front facing portion of the building to enhance, frankly, our visitor protocols to um, help us be more efficient in uh, welcoming our guests, but also making sure that people who enter the building have bonafide interest in being in the building and checking their credentials, much like you experience when you visit. So that project is causing us almost no complications right now because the work is done overnight from 6 p.m. to um, about four o'clock in the morning. And so there aren't even any workers in the building during the day. And 
um, that'll remain that way until school ends. And then there'll be a major push over the summer to finish the office complex and then raise the, off, the current office complex and turn it into a 21st century library. Um, the impacts for us are gonna be felt in the fall, frankly. The, these projects are gonna be finishing right as school is starting. So it's gonna be inconvenient. Um, should be inconvenient for staff, should not be to tremendously inconvenient for students or visitors. Uh, we probably won't have a functional library immediately when school opens. It'll probably be about a month before that happens. And that's certainly regretful. Um, but we'll, once we're finished, we'll be really uh, pleased with the results. So I do see a couple questions that have just popped up about some topics that we talked about. So one question is if numbers for COVID cases after spring break go up, what would happen with that percentage or what number would we reach to be a red flag? And that's exactly why I brought this. I appreciate that question. That's exactly why I brought this topic up at this moment in time. Our previous challenges with COVID have followed major breaks and our percent, you know, our, our percentage of kids and staff members getting sick peaked through this entire cross process. Um, through this entire cr crisis peaked after this past winter break. And we had absence rates immediately after winter break by students in the 200s, about 200 students a day. That's about 15% of the student body. So that's, that was very high and we were still able to remain open. And not only that, maintain a almost zero transmission rate at school. That's really the key. What's the transmission rate like at school? And right now it's been almost oh, very close to zero this entire time. So the toughest time for us was right before winter break with some uh, transmission that occurred. And uh, right, after right after winter break, we didn't have much transmission at all. People were sick from their travels and they stayed home until they got better. Um, I don't see us getting to a situation anywhere near that. We're not there right now. Like I said, we have two students and two staff members who've missed some time from school due to suspicion and confirmation of COVID positive cases. We'll continue to monitor it, but again, I would expect it to reach its peak this week if it's gonna reach a peak. And right now it's not doing that, but we'll keep monitoring it and we'll keep you informed. You know, if we get to a much higher level, obviously that would cause Loudoun County Public Schools perhaps or Dominion High School um, to you know, make changes in protocols right now. Um, there's no need for that. And here's a question that is admittedly uh, by the submitter, not um, necessarily related to our topic tonight, but it's certainly local and one that you might wanna know the answer to. And that is, uh, is there any uh, thought that banning cell phones in the building as Herndon High School is considering doing. Um, yeah, cell phones are a really distressing, this uh, concern goes on to say, you know, students are used, are, are distracted by their cell phones big time. And sometimes they look the part of being really focused on their schoolwork, but they're really distracted by their phones. And that is one of the really, really unfortunate consequences of uh, the COVID crisis. Obviously, over a year and a half time, we were unable from our vantage point to control how much of a distraction the cell phone was to a student's academic progress. When we returned to school in the fall, it was our expectation and continues to be our expectation that the teacher must have in her classroom or his classroom a specific game plan for how to um, help students manage their personal technologies. And while we have frustrations with some students, most students are pretty compliant with our expectations. Those strategies range from the obvious, put it away, I don't wanna see it, to here's a shoe rack by my door. You're assigned a number, maybe your number 17. When you come into my room, you'll need to put your personal device in your assigned number on the shoe rack. So that's a highly teacher controlled mechanism and a highly student controlled mechanism, which is, you know, put it out of sight, out of mind. And we'll continue to monitor that and its effectiveness and talk with our staff about that. But I too am concerned about cell phones and their distractive ability to our primary mission. 
So we are not at this time considering at all a ban on cell phones in the building. Um, if we ever did go there, we'd think maybe about uh, insisting that they be locked up in lockers, but I, we're not having any conversations about that right now. All right, and our final topic for the night um, is the one that has the longest term implications and is a really, really positive thing for our school community. We, uh, as I said at the outset of our time together, Dr. Janine Sims has joined us tonight. She's the principal at Will William Obadiah Roby High School. Roby High School opened this year as a to provide different types of paths for students with unique life circumstances to complete their diploma requirements. And uh, they've already graduated some students this year, midway through the year, including some of our Titans who were able to accelerate their progress process toward graduation with the help of Dr. Simpson and her staff. Uh, Dominion High School, as I might have said at the outset, currently stands at 83% of its current enrollment capacity. That means during any given school uh, block during the school day, we have several empty classrooms that are not uh, needing to be used. And um, so there's room for us to accommodate um, uh, another, another special program. And for many years, we were the host to the Loudoun County Public Schools Academy of Science. About four years ago, I think this is the fifth year now, the Academy of Science moved to a building designed for it, as well as our other academies programs. And so we've been pretty under enrolled by Loudoun County standards since that time. Our projected or our building capacity is just under 1800 students our student body right now is just under 1500, so plenty of space. Um, Dr. Sims and her faculty serve a group of our students who really would benefit from the opportunity to graduate on an accelerated path. And I'll give her a chance here to explain that in a little bit more detail right now. But her, Roby High School right now is serving students from about six or seven different high schools across Loudoun County. Students from all across Loudoun County can attend Roby and may have the advantage of a highly personalized school environment. Currently, the school is serving 30 students. That'll probably grow to 50 or 60 next year. And therefore, the time it takes for those students to graduate can be accelerated on their behalf because of the significant personalization and individual individualization that can occur. The huge benefit for us at Dominion High School is out of Roby's current student body of approximately 39 of them are Titans, 30% of their student body uh, are our very own Titans. So our Titans being able to uh, participate in the Roby experience and not have to uh, move to another part of Loudoun County to do so is a great advantage to them and to us. And these students, the students that Dr. Sims is serving and her faculty are serving generally are students who are older and need us to do some uh, accelerated things to help them gain enough credits before they uh, become adults. Adults can't attend our school and Roby is not an adult education high school. It's for adolescents. And um, when our students turn 21, they can no longer attend. So we're often racing against the clock for our students who are 17, 18, or 19 years of age to make sure they meet graduation requirements. So feel free to ask questions that you have about Roby coming. I'm gonna turn it over here in just a second to Dr. Sims so she can talk in just a little bit more detail about the students that she and her staff are blessed to serve and how they serve those students. Um, just point out that we have had a school within a school uh, for many years about 15 years and we the two high schools operate on different bell schedules based on different needs of their students and different instructional programs we share spaces very amicably we use the same main, main entrance the same restrooms get food out of the same cafeteria uh, use the same bus loop everything works uh, very very symmetrically we embrace one another and 
The faculties support each other. We are separate faculties for the most part who serve our individual students, uh, but we can easily share our, our building and our campus and do so um, with great, uh, a great symbiotic, symbiotic relationship. And I am really enthusiastic about Roby coming to uh, Titan Territory. When the school was proposed about a little over a year ago, um, I was hoping it was gonna land initially at Dominion High School. And I'm glad it's coming now because again, it allows our students who could benefit from its program to have really, really convenient access to it. And maximum age of a Roby student just to be clear, is the same as our maximum age. We have students at Dominion who are 19 and 20. Students with special abilities can actually be 22 and be in the building by law, but that's as old as they can be. And so these uh, students are not adults. Uh, they are older teenagers, but they are, um, and, the, and I guess the other really important point to make is that Ruby is not a destination for students who have behaved poorly in their current school assignment. You have to become a Roby student. A panel of individuals review those, reviews those applications on the basis of merit. And so students aren't assigned to Roby because they've acted badly somewhere else. Zero students are or will be assigned to Roby for that reason. So, all right, Dr. Sims, I'll stop talking a little bit and let you, if you wouldn't mind just addressing what some of your students' needs are that make Roby the right place for them and how you do it on their behalf. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Okay. Uh, thank you, Dr. Brewer. Um, my name is Janine Sims. I am the principal at uh, William Obadiah Roby High School. Um, so to just give you kind of a perspective, um, I know that um, technically we are considered an alternative high school, um, but I think a more uh, appropriate term is a non-traditional high school. You know, one of the things that we're able to do at Roby as a non-traditional high school is um, we have a different, I, I, my school could run from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. to meet students' needs. Many of our students are working 40 hours to support uh, their families. Um, and Roby offers kids an opportunity to earn more credits than what a traditional high school would allow. Typically in a, in a comprehensive high school, students earn seven credits. At Roby, we can uh, earn up to 10 credits in a school year. Our schedule is a five by five. So each semester, kids are taking only five classes from beginning to end. Um, and so it's what allows us to be able to graduate students um, earlier, so or faster. Um, Many of the students that come to us uh, have credits, but some of the credits um, from countries where they may come, we have a student who speaks Dari, for example. Um, you know, when they come, we have kids with 30 credits and they can't graduate necessarily because they're not necessarily the correct credits they need to um, earn a Virginia diploma. So we work really hard to get those students um, up to speed and, and get them graduated. So um, many of our, st our, our hours are, are different. So our, our students will typically come from 8 a.m. Um, in our first session and typically leave around 1.30. Many of our kids work beginning at 2 p.m. So they can get their 40 hours in um, a week. Um, so we are very blessed to do this work. Every student applies to Roby. We have a panel that reviews every applicant. Um, and we meet with every student to ensure that they are committed to doing the work to get out of high school and to earn their diploma. So that is our function. Um, we are not a place for disciplinary students. Uh, and you know, my, my staff works really hard. I have a staff currently of seven teachers um, and we're serving um, right now 22 students. We have five that graduated in February, three of the five were Titans. So um, Dr. Brewer and his staff have been wonderful in sending us amazing students who've done exceptional things and we've been able to graduate them faster so that they can go and start their careers. So it's, it's, been, it's been truly a blessing. Thank you. Yes, thank you, Dr. Sims, for giving students that opportunity. And uh, let's see, there was something I, wanted to add about that and I 
got a little distracted in my celebration of uh, you're helping our students accelerate their process to graduation. Um, oh, what was that? Sorry, I lost it. Um, oh, yeah, here it is. I got it. Sorry, just had to click back in my mind. Uh, I should have said really clearly that right now the move of Roby High School to co-locate with Dominion High School is a proposal from Loudoun County Public Schools administration that will need to be reviewed and a decision will be made to do that by the school board. And I just want you to know that the timeline for that to happen begins tomorrow night. Tomorrow night, the school administration will present the rationale for this uh, move to of, of Roby to Dominion. And as they always do, they give the board a couple of weeks to think about that, receive some public input, and then make a decision. That decision is anticipated to be made at the Tuesday, May 10th meeting of the school board. I obviously, as a big cheerleader for this to happen, uh, anticipate that it will pass, that it should pass, and that it will pass without, uh, without you know, any dissension, to be honest with you. But it is the decision of the school board. And if anyone in the public, our community or otherwise want to weigh in about that, you can certainly reach out to your school board representatives about it. And you, you of course, are entitled to speak your opinion about it for, for sure. Um, but we sure appreciate you taking the time to speak with us tonight about these five matters, SOLs, COVID-19, vaping, um, renovation, and number five, which is uh, Roby co-located with Dominion High School. And then we got that bonus thought about cell phones. Uh, we, we, I'm concerned about that instructionally and we're continuously trying to make sure we're supporting our students and our staff in limiting the amount of distraction that those phones cause because they, they certainly can be very distracting. So we appreciate everybody coming tonight. If uh, you want to pop some questions in the chat before we go, that's great, but the, it's been pretty quiet out there. So if you're ready to go, we sure appreciate your time tonight. And uh, as always, I say, go Titans.